Welcome back. It is game four of the Eastern Conference Finals. My three favorite picks are on the way. The Miami Heat trying to bring out the brooms. The Celtics trying to force a game five. Let's recap how yesterday went. Solid two in one day. We'll take the winning day any day of the week. LeBron James easily clears his over in points plus assists. Does that in the first half. Jokic gets it done pretty easily in the fourth quarter. And then Reeves was so close, but ended with 20 points plus assists. A two in one winning day. We will take that. Now, a reminder, if the Heat do win tonight, we won't have, I think, another NBA game until June 1st. So you have to wait until then for the videos. But we do do a daily MLB video every single morning. We're up 25 units so far in less than a less than two months of the MLB season. We've been doing really, really well. A little bit of a cold streak there, but you can check out those videos there. We're dialed in. But let's dive into our favorite picks. Like I said, we got three of them. Let's have another winning day. Let's start to string together these winning days and get some momentum going. Because we're going to Jason Tatum. I like his over 45 and a half PRAs, points, rebounds, and assists. Minus 106 on FanDuel. Now, you can probably play this up to minus 130. I don't see this going to 46 and a half, personally. Individual line, I like his points at 29 and a half. But at the end of the day, we know Tatum is capable of dropping 30 points, but also capable of getting, you know, 15 rebounds, maybe even like 10 assists on a random occasion here and there. But like we talked about in game three, Tatum, we took his over then, and he hurt us. And heck, the whole Celtics team hurt us. That was a 30-point blowout. You didn't even see the Celtics show up. And I would be very surprised if they don't show up for game four. And if they don't, well, hey, back. We'll just take our losses. See you on the see you on the couch in the playoffs from the Celtics because I just have a feeling these guys are NBA players. They have some pride. They got to step up and lead by example, and that's going to be Tatum. That's going to have to step up as the leader of this team. Now, so far this series, you've seen Tatum have great games, bad games. So far, 38, 55, and 26 PRAs. Obviously, last game, six for 18 from the field, only 14 points. It didn't play in the fourth quarter. It didn't even grab a rebound or assist in the second half. So. Look, only one free throw attempt. I fully expect Jason Tatum to be better than that. We've seen Tatum have some bad performances, but he normally bounces back, and he wasn't even aggressive in that game. Like I said, one free throw attempt. He likely gets to the line more than that today, and he just came out flat. He just wasn't there. But we've seen Tatum have a bad performance before, like you saw about game six of the last series. Then he bounced back into game seven, dropped 51 points. Now, I'm not going to come out here and be, make a bold prediction. Well, here's my not so bold prediction. Tatum's not scoring 51 points today, but we've seen him able to play a lot of minutes, like 42 to 43 minutes, and he's going to have a lot of time out there to fill up the stat sheet. And I certainly think he can do that. Now, we saw last series in game six and seven of their last one when, you know, their backs were against the wall. We saw Tatum play 43 and 42 minutes. Would not surprise me today, given they're down 0-3, if we again see Tatum play, you know, 43, 44, 45 minutes. They need him out there. And while the Heat are a very good defensive team, we've still seen Tatum be able to, you you know, score 30 points against this team. And we know he's going to be out there a lot. We saw Robert Williams move to the bench last game. So the rebound chances are up. Like I said, 10 rebounds in the first half, just didn't grab any in the second half. But the assist chances should be there with the Heat trying to double him if he drives. But I think at the end of the day, I'm going to trust Jason Tatum, who's humbly one of the best players in the world. As he said, I think he bounces back today. I would be very surprised if, see, if Tatum just go out sad, just absolutely get smoked in this game. He's going to show up. I have faith in that. So give me Jason Tatum, over 45 and a half PRA. is a super high line. Should play a lot of minutes. And I don't see the Celtics coming out and laying at laying an egg twice two games in a row. I think this game's close, probably a lower scoring game, but I still think Tatum gonna have the ball in his hands a lot tonight. Give me his over 45 and a half PRA's individual line. Like it's over in points, like it's over in rebounds. Assists are always here and there for him, but you never really want to. If you want to just take points plus rebounds, I don't think that's a terrible pivot either. But let's move on to my second play. And it's actually going to be an under. And while we haven't had the greatest track record with under so far this postseason, I think this one's a pretty good look because I'm going to Kyle Lowry taking his under seven and a half rebounds plus assists, minus 120 on bet 365. If somehow this goes to six and a half, I don't advise taking it there. I'd probably play this to around minus 135. Maybe is the most juice I would lay on a rebounds and assist line because these lines can be a little bit fluky when you're taking rebounds and assist line. There's a good chance Lauer could grab one rebound today, could also grab five. You just really never know. You're just banking on the ball not bouncing his way, which can always be unpredictable. But I do think it's under seven and a half rebounds plus assists. And here's why. Well, it's kind of hard to bet a Heat role player because Holster is always messing with the guy's minutes. You'll see Lowry play 30 minutes one game, then 15 to 20 the next. So while I don't, I can't really predict what Spolstra is going to do, that's why what makes him arguably the best coach in the league, I do think that Lowry can go under here. Now, so far the series, well, in game one, he had six combined rebounds plus assists, three and three. Then game two, one rebound, five assists. And then last game, he did have five rebounds and four assists going over this line. So under in two of three. If you look at the minutes, you've seen 28, 17, and 28 minutes. If we can see a reduction in those minutes, that would obviously bode well for us today. And we saw Gabe Vincent have a great game last game. Duncan Robinson likely gets his minutes again today, too, because he played really well in game three. But also at the end of the day, when Spolstra puts a guy like Kyle Lowry off the bench into the lineup, 
and Lowry, let's say his his unit just stinks it up. They go on a minus. They the Celtics go on a ten zero run. Look, we're gonna see this. Uh, we're gonna see. Uh, you're gonna see the Heat very comfortable benching guys. They're not afraid. The Spolster was not afraid of switching it up. And so maybe we see Cowher Lowry get benched, or maybe he plays a lot of minutes. Either way, over the last three games in this series, he's averaged seven point seven rebound chances, fifth on the team, and six point three assist chances, third on the team. We know Jimmy Butler's gonna have the ball in his hands a lot. And I think Bam gets a couple more assist chances today. The rebounds, like I said, can always be fluky. We could see Bam grab fifteen rebounds. Rebounds. We see him grab three like he did last game. Jimmy Butler normally pretty consistent on the boards, but I still think that Kevin Love, who didn't really play in game three, is back to he is probable to play. Should get his normal minutes. He's a good defensive rebounder. So I think the Celtics will likely play hard pretty today, play aggressive. And we've seen Lowry got in a little bit of foul trouble last game. He's always an aggressive defender. He can also get into foul trouble too. Give me Lowry's under seven and a half rebounds plus assists. I think it's a pretty good angle. I don't necessarily see him getting a ton of assists today. And because I just don't see the Heat swirl players knocking down a ton of shots. And then the rebounds are a little bit fluky. He could grab five, but he could also grab one and make this almost a no sweat bet. So give me the under seven and a half rebounds plus assists. If it was six and a half, no chance I'm touching it. But seven and a half, I feel like is, is a big change. So give me this at seven and a half. Now for my third and final play of the day, we are going to run it back with the play that did hurt us in game three, very similar to Jason Tatum. It's going to be Bam out of bio. And I'm taking us over 31 and a half points, rebounds and assists, minus 105 on BetMGM. It's my third and final play of the day. Hopefully we can go two and one. Three and a sweep would be beautiful. Now let's talk about this because if you are on Fanduel, they have 32 and a half. And please do not bet this on Fanduel at 32 and a half. They got this at 32 and a half minus 102. You can get 31 and a half and minus 105. Look, if it goes up to 32 and a half, I'd be surprised. Look, this is why I say do you always have to line shop because if Bam out of bio, he could end on 32 on the dot but you would be able to get 31 and a half on almost every single major book. So definitely line shop. I don't care if you use our sports book sign up links in the description, at least line shop. So you get the best available lines, at least to you. You don't have to have 25 books, but you can have at least, you know, three to four with your money kind of dispersed across. And maybe you use just two books mainly, but there's always, there's all, look, if you're not line shopping, you're, you're, you're costing yourself some money, but let's talk about out of bio like Tatum Harrison game three, but can't control a blowout there. And I don't expect this one to be a blowout here. Now out of bio this series, you look at his PRA lines, game one, 33 PRAs in 37 minutes, game two, 48 in 38 minutes. And last game, only 18 PRAs in 26 minutes, only five field goal attempts from out of bio in game three, only three rebounds for him despite playing, you know, 26 minutes. So at the end of the day, I mean, you look at this game, I think out of bio plays a little bit more aggressive and I think he shoots more than five times. I mean, if you were to take a step back and look at that game three, how did the heat win? Well, it really wasn't out of bio. It really wasn't Jimmy Butler a whole lot. It was the bench guys that came in and, and then Gabe Vincent in the starting line. I mean, Gabe Vincent, Duncan Robinson, and Cody Martin combined for 69 points. Look, if that happens, Bam and is not hitting his over. And probably Jimmy Butler's going under too, because you're just not going to get 69 combined points from those three guys probably ever again. But at the end of the day, those guys have played really well in this series. But for them to score nearly 70 points combined and combined for a lot of the Heat's points production, Probably not happening again. So I think Bam Adebayo looks to be more aggressive like he was in game one and two. And this is a matchup that he's taken advantage of in the past. I mean, he does average 32.8 PRAs per 34.6 minutes in the regular season. Probably sees more than that. Saw 37 and 38 minutes in game one and two. Like I said, only 26 minutes. Didn't play in the fourth quarter last game. But we've seen Bam Adebayo turn it on before. If this is a close game, he probably could play the whole fourth quarter too. And look, Bam, I think he's certainly capable of getting this line. He saw himself do it in game one and two two and he's always had great success against Al Horford. Robert Williams is the guy that they moved to the bench and while I don't know what Joe Mazzulla does imagine that probably stays the same today but look we're going to see it at I think be a little bit more aggressive. I think this is a game where the Heat's role players their bench guys don't show up a whole lot I think we're going to see guys like Jimmy Butler and Bam on the have to carry this offense for this pivotal game for us to try to avoid going back to Boston. So I'm going to trust my initial call. Normally when I run a back place, normally they do pretty well. So I really like Bam on the I like him today. I think he has a good chance to fill up the stat sheet. We know he can get 20 plus points, but he also can grab, you know, 12, 15 rebounds, maybe get six assists. So he can make this a pretty good chance at hitting this. So give me his over 31 and a half points, rebounds, and assists as my third and final play of the day. As always, let me know your guys' favorite plays down below in the description. Drop a like, comment, and subscribe if you want to. We certainly would appreciate we just passed 172,000 subscribers, continuing the climb up. We appreciate you guys. Technically, over this way, my camera's a little inverted, but I appreciate you guys. Have a great Tuesday. Hopefully, they force a game five so we can at least do another video before June 1st. But if it is until June 1st, I will see you guys then. Check out our MLB daily videos every single morning. Some fun things coming to you guys this summer. Let's have a great day. Let's go 3 0. I'll see you guys back in tomorrow. Or hopefully, well, tomorrow, definitely for more picks. Just we'll see if it's in the NBA or MLB. Technically, NBA's not Thursday. Whatever. You understand what I'm saying. Let's have a great day. See you guys in the next one. Peace.